to start us off, I, I think it's appropriate first just to say thank you um, to the town manager, to the superintendent, to the department heads, to the town school, town and school staff um, for, for what I'm sure have been long hours um, in their dedication through this. Um, you know, we see the information coming through on the websites, and, and it's clear there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. So th thank you. We very much appreciate it. Um, this is this is uncharted territory for everybody, so so thank you yep. thank for your leadership. Um, I want to thank the committee also for their engagement under unusual circumstances. We, we might talk about a little bit of kind of kind of rules here how we engage in this uh, in this forum but I appreciate your your engagement I appreciate your flexibility um, both today and I'm sure uh, that flexibility is going to need to continue uh, up. Um, and finally let me say um, I, I missed the the last meeting from what I think is two weeks ago but was post election and I, I um, I think both Karen and Sean were at that meeting, but I was not, so therefore I didn't get a chance to, to publicly say congratulations to both uh, Karen for joining the select board and, and Sean for joining the school committee. Um, well deserved and, and look forward to working with you in that capacity. Um, just in terms of kind of how we, how we do this tonight, um, I, I, my understanding is that Mark did it last night with the select board remotely. Correct. Uh, I'd ask Bob or yeah, I'd ask Bob or anybody else who was there. Any any key learnings just from a running the meeting perspective that we could take away from last night and apply tonight? Um, it was a little tricky to know whose turn it was to talk. It's not like there was a waiting list. Obvious, you know, there was three remote participants. So um, Mark, as the chair, just paused. Um, several times and and sometimes called out names just to make sure do you have anything do you have anything um, so with um, you know with six of you or seven of you if it comes to that all remote um, you know you maybe just want to give some opportunity for comments not necessarily calling names but just saying you know is there anyone else is there anyone else because it, it's not like yep. you can raise your hand well yeah. actually you can right uh, are you guys? Just raise hand. I, you know oh, Zoom yeah, better. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's not get too fancy. I, I might be able to track it, but I've got notes and other documents open. Yeah. Who's hosting the meeting? Jackie. If you don't mind me asking on Zoom. No one right now, or? Jackie, are you on? Who's hosting I'm, the I'm the first one that, that? I'm the first one that called in the, to the telephone, so I don't know if that means we're hosting the meeting. I'm on a phone, no, not, um, not a screen. So. Uh, on a screen, you can host the meeting, and then if you have the screen in front of you, you can raise your hand. Or you, so if, I, if Eric or myself or whomever, we could click our names and do claim host. That would then create a interface on Zoom of which would show each individual phone number or name and who is speaking, and everyone can mute themselves so one person speaks and can raise their hand. Okay. I don't know if we want to go down that that route, but that's... I don't. I don't I know. Might, um, Why don't we just try it without that for now and see how it goes? I'm, I might suggest that. I might suggest that we um, just identify ourselves before we speak. Right. I think I can tell voices. I mean, I know Paula. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, um, but but just if we could each identify ourselves before we speak, let's let's proceed that way. Um, and if we need to put in anything stricter, we can. If it just gets too confusing. Um, I see, I know Bob, Jackie, and Sharon are there in the library. I can't right. just make out who the other two and are. Then, um, Can you let me know? Yeah, on my right, Jane Kinsella from DPW and Amy Lannon from oh. the library. <laughs> Hi, Jane. Hi, Amy. Hi. All right. All right, so from, a, from an agenda perspective, what I have is, um, you know, anybody from the committee, let me know if you think different, or Bob, certainly. Uh, let me know if you think different. But I, I, I think that the... Um, the first item we should address is the reserve funds transfer um, based on comments about its importance. Um, we also have the FY21 budget, um, the library enterprise funds, um, um, a couple other things remaining. We have the articles to vote. <clears throat> um, I feel like it makes sense to do most or all of them while we're here and if this goes smoothly. 
Uh, Bob, I did see your kind of prioritization, and, and it could be that some, you know, are not included in a in, in a potentially abbreviated town meeting. Right. Um, but it probably makes sense for us to vote them all. Sure. Um, and then there was a note at one point, Bob, on the PEG Enterprise Fund. Do we still oh, yeah. need to address um, that? Yeah, Sharon yeah. should probably talk to that because that just got sent late. Oh, in terms of what was okay. There? So yeah. last year we added. Can, can you hear Sharon? Can you hear me? Do you want me yes. To yeah. Okay. So last year we added a PEG Enterprise Fund um, because we're required to, um, and so this year we're going to need to approve a budget. And so you see a separate page for a new Enterprise Fund, which is PEG, which is the RCTV, the um, Public Education Access um, or Governmental Access. And so we have a budget there based on what RCTV um, has for a budget. I hear some people. Now I've got an echo. Um, and so that's, that's what you got um, late because it was not in the package before. It's just basically what we anticipate our receipts from Comcast and Verizon to be um, and what the budget for RCTV is. And that's, um, you, that money is used to support RCTV. Can, can you remind me what the amount is for FY21? I want to say it's 600000 That's That's what I wrote down, but I wasn't sure if that was the final figure. Well, we'll work on it that. It might be six fifteen. If I, it, I don't even remember if I brought the page. I don't think I printed the page. Okay. I know there was six. What does he have? Does he see it, the page? I don't have the page. 615. 615. Andrew? Because I think we're projected at 615 this year, so I think we're using it kind of baseline for the next year. Okay. No, no. 615 is what we have for FY20. Right. 612, 500 is what we have for FY21. Um, if you're on Zoom, you should be seeing my screen of the PEG access revenues sent out. Is, it, is anyone uh, seeing that? Because we specifically did not attempt to do um, video. Yeah, I okay. am seeing it. Cool. Okay. Awesome. I'm seeing it. I like that. Yeah, but Andrew, I'm seeing um, yeah. the reserve fund. Um, oh, yeah, that's what I'm seeing, but I saw something. That's what got me excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got Hi, Mark Mall. Yeah. Mark Mall joined. Sorry for being late. Hi, Mark. No worries. Is that, is that better? Yeah, there you right. go. I've got it now. Yeah, okay. Yep. So um, why don't we... Um, Six fifteen and six FY twenty one is six twelve five hundred. Okay, thank you. All right. So why don't we flip back to the reserve fund transfer piece and and, and begin with that? Um, and here I, you know, Andrew, I don't I don't actually have that information. If I do, I missed it. I can read that to um, you, if that's helpful. Yeah, well, and I'm, I'm I'm seeing Andrew's screen now, but let me turn it over to Bob just to kind of explain okay. what's going on here, please. Um, and I'll skip the line numbers, but we're asking for a transfer of half of your reserve fund, 100000 out of your $200,000. Um, i will go through the line items. Uh, 10000 for uh, facilities town custodian overtime. 5000 for facilities core maintenance worker overtime. And 10000 for facilities uh, school custodian overtime. And just to be real clear about that, the 10000 for the school custodians goes into the whole school budget. Um, the others go into the uh, town portion of facilities. And then lastly, uh, 75, and, and I should add, those are all wages, and then 75,000 into the town manager reserve fund, which is available to spend only for expenses, it being an expense. And I provided FinCom a list of about $70,000 of costs we had already identified last week. Um, just to elaborate a little bit more, um, Governor Baker filed legislation on Monday it is not yet passed that would allow deficit spending. Uh, so it's possible that we won't need to do things like this, but it still seemed like a prudent ask. Um, and further, if you know, if and when town meeting meets, um, um, I have a Warren article you'll see later asking for 200,000 to go back into the FinCom Reserve Fund, which would give you 300,000 for the rest of the year just because we don't really know how the year is going to tie out. And then lastly, um, and it's, it's also later in the um, warrant, but we're asking for $100,000 of overtime for public safety. Um, we don't need that today in public safety because the budgets are so large. Um, and 
again, you know, we probably will need it or possibly would need it in more like May or June. But for the facilities wage budgets, um, those budgets are much smaller and much tighter, and we really would request the overtime funding sooner, meaning now. All right. So, Andrew, would you mind scrolling back up for a bit? <coughs> Pardon me. All right, so this is um, <clears throat> custodian overtime. Right. Um, and the way to think about this is the overtime needed, you estimate, needed for the remainder of the fiscal year. That would be an estimate of the additional money needed just for this virus cleaning, but obviously, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an evolving situation. That's what we guessed last week. You know, their, their, core, their base overtime budget is something like 25000 so 10000 is a pretty good chunk, but, but, yeah. we'll, but we'll see. And, and also, um, you know, technically facilities is a bottom line budget in core. Um, the town custodian budget is much, much smaller. Um, we don't strictly need to ask you for wages because it's a uh, bottom line, but that's what Sharon's going to do anyway, so it seemed prudent. I'd be most concerned of all these lines probably for town custodians because that's the smallest budget. Any questions from the committee? And just a reminder to identify yourself. Do you want us to make a motion? Yes. If no questions, I'd hear a motion. Ms. Paula, I'll make a motion to transfer $100,000 from the reserve fund to the accounts as documented. Does that work? Yes. Andrew, second. Thank you. Further discussion from anybody on this? My understanding is we need to do a roll call. That's, that's correct. All right, let's proceed to the vote. Um, Paula? Aye. Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Aye. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Chair votes yes, uh, so motion carries 7-0. Okay, thank you. Um, Eric, uh, Sharon or I will probably fax you something or email you something, rather. Um, eventually, we'll need your signature on that, but no no worries. Yeah, it's easy for me to, it's, um, if you email it, I can sign it and scan it right back. I okay. have an app that can do that. Great, thank you. Yep. All right. Um, does that take us then to the remaining pieces of the FY21 budget? Um, Bob, can you remind me what we have still? We have the yeah, library. We library have enterprise and enterprise funds. funds. Um, so Amy's here if there's questions or if you want to hear from her. Okay. And how were we doing it before? Was there... Uh, um, I don't last, know. last week I was sort of presenting, if you will, present budgets everything? and yeah. highlighting lines that might have been a little different. Uh, honestly, I don't know Amy's budget as well, so she's going to have to do that. <laughs> Amy, um, could I ask the sure. walk um, through? It's a it's a flat budget. It's well, not flat. It's a it's a three percent budget. Um, with if um, I can just interrupt for people that need it, it's on page fifty five of the packet that got sent out a few weeks ago. Sorry, Amy. That's okay. And I I just want you to know that your packet, the first number that you see under the total library totals, is off by sixty seven dollars. Um, that number. You know, I'm just having a little trouble, Ms. Mark. I'm yeah. just having a little trouble here. Sorry. Sure. Yep. Um, so just so you know, the packet you received, um, the FY21 town manager budget total should be uh, 1814395 oh. four, six, or whatever it is. Four, that's, six, uh, that's just a, basically a typo. It's a $67 <laughs> error. Keep the change. Because um, I, I copied and pasted it out of something else. It is, it's a 3% um, salary and 3% um, expense budget increase. Um, the directives are basically to keep our employee retention and succession planning going, to um, 
we do have an increase of one position, which might jump out under ad administration as having a 15% increase, because we're just moving someone from 15 hours to 20 hours, and that's our communication specialist. It's becoming, particularly now, she's working more than 15 hours a week, um, helping us keep on top of uh, all of our communications pieces. So it is, it's a really important, um, I knew it was important, I didn't realize how important it was going to be. So that, that is one thing, um, but to, incre to increase and improve our communications, as well as expand outreach and efforts to connect with um, and underserved uh, patrons. So um, essentially we're, we're shifting a, a little bit. It's, it's really just bringing things in line, I'm trying to think if there's anything else <coughs> in, that jumps out at me in terms of either expenses or um, we, we took out overtime. Nobody seems to want to work overtime. So, so um, we added that back in. Um, that's where we kind of scooped in for the um, hours for the communication specialist. We, we kind of dug into that a little bit. Um, expenses are what they are. Um, do you have any questions? Yeah, Amy, this is Eric. Um, if I recall, there's there's a you're required to spend a certain amount yep. of the budget on materials. Yep. Can you can you refresh my memory as to what that number is? And I I, I feel like you were pegged to a certain number for a while, and then that shifted last year. Just, yep. I, yeah, I shifted a couple years ago. Can you refresh ago, my memory on that? Just say where we are now. Yeah. So the number used to be 15 percent. It is now 13 percent, and the trustees' goal is to um, they we put aside 14 percent. Um, so that is definitely, you know, it's, it's a whole 1% um, <laughs> over what the requirement is, but they, um, they just feel that we're still at that, the, the percents are, des are decided on your population, and so we now move into the, once we hit over 25, where it's 25 to 50,000 communities uh, size, so since we're still at the low end of that, um, the trustees feel that there's still a good benefit to spending 14,000 to 14% of, of the total over, you know, if we were closer to 50,000, 13% would probably make sense. Does that, make, is that clear? Thank you. Yes, it is. Thank you. Anything else? Any questions from the committee? Yay. None here. None here. Thank you, Amy. Okay, thanks, Amy. Does that take us to enterprise? Actually, this is just sort of administrative, just when you refer to sort of that typo. Yeah. Um, because this will roll into the, yep. the list later, which was incorrect, wages or expenses, because I'm not. That's, um, yeah, no, it's, it's wages, kind of... so the right number I have is 1,432,295. That is And correct. that's on page gotcha. 11. We'll, yep. When we Thank get you. to mo your motions, if you do that, I'll certainly make that yeah, clear. Exactly. Okay. okay. Thank you. All set for the enterprise funds? Yes. Okay. Um, those, are, those are found starting on page 63 of your uh, budget packet. And, uh, and if you start, um, we'll skip the overview. If you turn to page 65, just as a summary, <clears throat> financial summary, you'll see a column uh, in the dead center called percent change right next to the left where it says proposed FY 2021. If you look under net water fund, that's a 4% increase. Um, that's suggesting or su maybe outlining, not suggesting, a certain reserve fund usage policy. The select board decides that. I'm not sure when they'll have the water and sewer hearing. Um, they, they, in the last five or six years, have done it before town meeting to inform town meeting in writing. That may or may not happen this year. Um, but uh, again, net water fund up 4%, net sewer fund up 3.5%, so a typical combined uh, cost would be about three and three quarters percent and as you'll see uh, shortly there's a lot of capital uh, projects going on mm -hmm. uh, turning to page 66 the number that certainly jumps out is operational expenses uh, up 10% and if you turn to page 67 
Um, Jane can correct me, but I jotted down some notes. Um, water supplies and equipment. Um, there were some equipment listed that didn't qualify as capital. Um, it was too small, but it got stuck into this line and the same with uh, parts and maintenance, just more. Um, in the parks and, and maintenance, there was a specific list of things um, that looked like one time to me, um, as opposed to, you know, a couple of years ago, you were spending at 80 to 100,000, and this is a jump for this year. Um, the wage budget is not particularly interesting, up 3%, like Amy's, or 3.1%. Um, <clears throat> retirement assessment actually went down, which is interesting because, as you remember, the general fund went up quite a bit, but that's based on uh, who's working uh, in the fund. OFEB contributions up a little, uh, health insurance about flat, and again, really not that much interesting in the rest of the budget until we get to capital and debt. So if you want to turn to page 69, um, print is a little small, but that's capital and debt. And I'm, I want to draw your attention specifically to three line items which are part of the town meeting warrant. Um, <clears throat> Article 12 is a no interest loan from MWRA. It's shown on this page 69 as lead removal, 1.5 million. It's shown as starting in FY22. Um, the capital markets are difficult to borrow in right now, but as I go through this, I'll give you an outline of when we intended to borrow, and this one was uh, not in the next six months, sometime after that, possibly 12 months to even 18 months. Uh, but that depends on when the MDRA makes that, makes that money available. Well, we, we did not intend any repayment next fiscal year. We're just asking for the authorization because we don't always know when the, M when the MWRA will free up money. Um, next is, if you will, backwards Article 11. Um, that's the uh, gazebo improvements. That's a specific area of town. It's in the southeast corner. Um, you, you can, I hope, see in the write-up. Uh, we'll get to that in the warrant, uh, when the warrant articles, but there's a specific need to uh, increase the water pressure and make some changes up there. Um, it's fine, it, the pressure's low. It's, it's not uh, at a, an emergency state by any means, but if that water tank came offline, um, we're not sure how good the fire flows would be over an extended period of time, so it's really maintenance that should be done. Um, and that was uh, learned just from studying uh, so water flows over there. Um, and lastly, in terms of uh, debt authorizations, uh, and and I, I should add, the gazebo, again, is not an immediate thing. It's an eventual thing. Uh, n nothing repaid in FY21, and I'll circle back to that thought. Uh, lastly, Article 13, and this is where it gets a little bit larger, 4.3 million from two different sources. Um, we have a million and a half from the MWRA with the balance um, on our own. The MWRA portion will be interest-free. And again, both of those uh, tranches are also expected to begin in FY22, not immediate. Um, the reason I'm, I'm saying it this way is if, if it comes to it, these three articles are not essential to do this spring. It's just good planning to get them approved, especially where two of them have MWRA funds available that we can't exactly predict when they'll be done. But as you'll see, when we get to sewer, there's something we really do need to um, borrow as soon as possible and work on as soon as possible. So I don't think there's anything else, particularly in water, that's interesting, but I'm certainly willing to uh, have Jane answer any questions. Uh, uh, hey, Jane, Bob, this is uh, Ed Ross. Uh, quick question, uh, just as, uh, on the um, logistics of uh, that uh, MWRA, it, it, um, is, it, are you, is there an obligation on our end, or is there a time limit, like once it becomes available to do it, or, it, or that window shuts? I just understanding that a little bit better. My, my understanding is it's first come, first serve. So Reading's usually first gotcha. or close. Um, there is usually a finite amount of funds available. Um, in recent years, at least, that's been given to a community. You have so many dollars. Uh, many years ago, it was first come, first serve, and whoever got it, got it. But now it's by community. Um, usually the funds are available, I'd say, for multiple years. 
so it's not urgent that you use them, um, but we always like to use them soon because it's interest-free. Of course, thanks. Yeah. Anyone else on water? Yeah, it's sort of to that point. So this is Paula. So then assuming we do approve it, once it's approved, that's when you communicate with MWRA? Yeah, typically. Uh, at what point? Yeah. Typ typically, um, we like to get debt approval well before we need it, just to give us that in the bank, if you will. We don't actually borrow money until we need the money, and we have bid out a project and, and got a good result. Um, the MWRA is a little bit different because we're not borrowing the money. They just tell us one day, okay, it's available. Now, from the paperwork I've seen from the MWRA, it's available with principal repayments starting in FY22, and I would say it's, it's available now. Uh, but we can't actually, it's available to ask for it. It's not available to have it. I think the have it happens in the next six or eight months. Yeah, August, September. Okay, okay August, September, uh, Jane is saying. Got it. Okay. Thanks. All right, I'll, I'll jump over to Sewer. <laughs> sewer uh, is on page 70 in your, uh, in your budget. And again, that was um, a slightly lower increase all in all. Uh, a very large part of the sewer budget is the MWRA expense. It's about three quarters of our costs. Uh, last I knew, they were forecasting just of over a 3.3% 3, 3 .3 increase for those costs. We don't actually get final figures for the MWRA until sometimes our town meeting is, is finished or sometimes just before. Uh, that's their best estimate. Um, I think it was in January or February. Um, right. Previous year projections were going to be were that they were going to be worse, right? Yes. You know, it's forecasted. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, p part of the reason is they refinanced a lot of their debt to lower costs, and then the new debt that they had projected came in a lot cheaper. So that's been a big part of it. Um, they've mm -hmm. done a really good job financially, kind of managing that that aspect of it. And and not and they have done, I think, a pretty aggressive capital improvements program. So it's not that they backed away from that. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it's worked out well. Um, on page 71, one cost that jumps out, it's not a big dollar figure, but again, supplies and equipment, something that really wasn't capital, an increase from 16 to 30,000, kind of looks like a big number. Um, and this one, the retirement assessment is up a little bit, health insurance is down a little bit more than that, and again, that's just based on personnel uh, in the enterprise fund. Um, Flipping to page 72, this is the uh, more urgent um, Article 14. It's, um, it's the Sturgis uh, sewer pump station. Um, the estimate for that, I'm sorry, if, if I misspoke, it's Article 10. Um, it's $2 million, and I believe, Jane, is you're going out to bid shortly this spring. Yeah. So this is expected to be repaid next fiscal year, so the authorization is really quite important in order to get the work done quickly. And uh, for any new FinCom members, uh, several years ago, DPW uh, commissioned a study of all the sewer stations and lined them up in priority order, which was most urgent, which was, which was least urgent. It had been many, many years since they were uh, replaced. Um, I can't remember if there's 10 or 12 of them, and I think we're about a third of the way through. Uh, but the most critical ones, and in ca some cases the largest ones, have already been done or will soon be done. And you can see in the capital plan um, up above under debt, um, a lot of the uh, things laid out, um, all those sort of blank areas with just one number in one year are sewer stations out into the future. Um, the other sewer article is not quite as critical again. And I, and I, it's Article 14, downtown improvements for a million dollars. Um, when I mentioned the 4.3 million for water, I, I didn't really say it specifically, but um, I supplied you in a write-up where the streets are, and if you didn't notice, they're almost all right around the downtown area. So the 4.3 million, 1 million here, and 1 million stormwater are all in the Haven Street uh, train station area generally, or close by. And these are the underground improvements that we needed um, in order to then progress to something above the ground if we get to it um, with all the economic development going on in the area. 
that this, these repairs will all make whatever future growth or current growth happens easily sustainable from an infrastructure standpoint. So again, um, Article 10 is the more important to the sewer station one. Um, any other questions on sewer? I just happen to be noticing. So is this just to make it um, balance? You know, sometimes it's six year term sometimes the five oh. and then the ten yeah that's um that's guesswork right now that's not really yeah. what yeah. income or town meeting or anyone approves yeah um, but just putting the puzzle together at it this is point. putting a puzzle together and it's yeah. trying to you know even out the cash obligation um mm -hmm. but and I, and I i can't remember a time when it was shown in one way and we borrowed differently but we do reserve the right to do that you know depending on market conditions we might borrow for slightly longer or slightly shorter but you know, the budget that town meeting would vote is, is the limit. So, you know, we can't uh, yeah. do a five-year instead of a 10-year and then just somehow expect to pay that off. Uh, right. So you authorize the bottom line. Yes. And, and generally, you yeah. try to fit in all the pieces exactly like you said as a puzzle. All the debt and, and capital projects fit together. And the top line of both attempts to be not too crazy, you know, a little, a little bit stable as much as you can. If you look at the total on sewer, total capital and debt, you can see it's around a million dollars, and then it jumps up to about a million two. And it sort of hangs around in that area more or less for, for several years. Anyone else on sewer? <clears throat> well, we'll jump to page. We're good. Yeah, it's page 73, stormwater. There's almost nothing to say. It's It's the same you know, enterprise fund it is, as it is this year, it won't require any change in the rates. Um, it's described on pages 73 and 4. And again, probably the only interesting thing is uh, $1 million debt authorization. I think this will be the first debt authorization for the Stormwater Enterprise Fund. And again, it's a million dollars of improvements in and around the downtown area. And that's, again, not a critical one. It's not expected to be done for another you know, year or so. We could get November town meeting authorization. But the plan was to bring these all in spring and just get them done. But again, not urgent. And um, in terms of uh, the fee that's charged, um, you, can, you can't really see here. But for prior years, we've been buying a lot of capital knowing that at some point debt would going to crowd that out. So you can see that in the current year we spent 250000 on one piece of equipment and the prior year before that about the same. And then we don't have capital scheduled for several years, uh, but we do have debt. So that's how that was planned. Yeah, any questions on stormwater? None. Okay. Um, is it FinCom's pleasure to vote on the budgets, or do you want to go through the warrant articles and get to the budget when you get to the budget? You, you cut out there, Bob. Could you ask that again? Sure. Would you prefer to vote on the budgets now, or would you prefer to pick up the town meeting warrant and just get to the budgets when the article comes up? Any preference from the committee? No preference. Why don't we vote the budget? Okay, I, I was chatting with Paula earlier, uh, and this is especially helpful when you're in roll call. Um, someone can make a motion for the whole section or pieces of the sections, for instance, line B99 through F99 as presented. Um, and then if any member of FinCom wishes to take a line out, you can do that. This way, you, you just have to roll call vote as, as rarely as you need to or as seldom as you need to. So, you know, I wouldn't suggest doing the whole page in one motion, but you could certainly do uh, the lines up top, uh, B99 through F99, the town budgets, G91 through M92, and we'll make the library correction, uh, the school budget, and then the enterprise funds, you can do them singly or together. That just makes it easier than doing a roll call in every single line. I support that. And again, any member can pull a line out if you want to talk about it or offer an amendment. Forgive me. I'm just trying to see where this is documented. It's, 
page, oh, page no, 11 in your book. Sorry, page 11. Page 11. In the, um, in the, in the, town, in the, the town budget. Manager's in the town yeah. Meeting budget. Yeah. And I should add that we're also going to change the uh, Z99 peg access, as, as you folks pointed out earlier. So there's just those two changes, uh, library wages and uh, peg access. Can anyone still hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And he's got it projected now. Wait, so where's that peg access? It's at the very bottom, Z99 under stormwater. Can oh, gotcha. Me? Yeah, yeah, Eric. Can oh, you yeah, hear? Eric. Can you not hear us? We lost Anna at the very end last night, so yeah, we might have lost Eric. All right, Paula, you're up. <laughs> Eric, you're not there, are you? <laughs> is, okay. Is everyone else there? I'm still here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Mark's yes. still here. Or Sean's still here. Sorry. He may. Dan's still, still, still here. Still here. <laughs> And uh, it looks like Eric's still on. Did someone unplug Eric? Isn't that a tradition? <laughs> yeah, listen, yeah, I'm, I think Mark to does that. Up there tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably so, call back in. So are people comfortable taking it in three separate chunks? Yes. Yes. Is, is anyone right. uncomfortable doing that? Okay, so do we want... So one well, I way... I guess we can wait. Paula, one way you can do this... Sorry. Is that you, Eric? Yeah, sorry, I dropped some. I'm back. Excellent. Uh, well, Paula took over, so too bad. Um, <laughs> I had no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, easiest, the easiest way to do that, it's perfectly legal, is to make a motion for B99 through F99 as presented. You don't have to list each one. Okay. So I'm happy to make that motion to accept the budget line items B99 through F99 as presented. Second. This is it. I second. Okay. Ed. Give it to whoever you want. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Sorry, I, I beat you, Martin. I beat you. All right. <laughs> any 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 further discussion or or um, anybody want to take any of those out? Hearing none, <clears throat> we're ready for the roll call vote. Um, same order as before, Paula? Aye. Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Yes. In favor. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Eric is a yes, passes 7 0. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Um, for the next ones, I want to remind you of the correction line nine. I'm sorry, L91 library wages uh, should be one million four thirty-two two ninety-five. And does that change the total line? Uh, it does, but you're just making the motions uh, G91 okay. through M92 as as amended. Yeah. I guess we'll say. Okay. So we need the motion. As amended. I'll, I'll make a motion to accept line items G91 through M92 as amended for L91 library wages. Second. Mark. Mark with a second. Further discussion? Roll call vote. Paula? Aye. Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Yes. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Eric is yes. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. You want to just do schools, Paula? Sure. I'll make a motion to accept line item U99, the school department, as presented. Second. Mark. Mark second. Any further discussion? All right, roll call the vote. Uh, Paula? Aye. Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Yes. 
Andrew? Aye. Uh, I messed up the order. Ed? <laughs> Aye. Eric is a yes. 7 0. Motion carries. And then to, again to amend uh, uh, line Z99, peg access should be $612,500. So again, if that motion could be as amended. I'll make a motion to accept line items W99 through Z99 as amended. Seconded, this is Ed. Further discussion? We'll call a vote, Paula. Aye. Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Yes. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Eric is yes. Motion carries 7 0. Great. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Goodbye to Amy. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you, Amy. <clears throat> Um, Thank you. <clears throat> Does it take us to the other uh, the other warrant articles? Yeah, and I just want to. Um, I, I'm using my amended uh, our, um, order, so that's probably not the most sensible way to go through this. Um, Article four is the first one that uh, FinCom would be asked to approve. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have a page number to refer you to, but that went out uh, in the last few days. This is the change in capital. FY20 has a $20,000 addition uh, for a fire panel in the Pleasant Street Center. That's the project that was expected to cost 50,000, was bid out, and 70,000 is the cost. Um, that one's important for us to uh, complete the job this fiscal year. Um, there's a series of changes in the out years. Um, you can see $375,000 increase uh, due to two projects being up, uh, moved up. Uh, well, I should say one project being moved up and some new things uh, fit in. Uh, Simon's Way, parcel planning, senior slash community center planning, parks and field space planning are all things that came from the financial forum discussion last fall. Um, and the reason the uh, DPW bucket truck was moved up was just as much as any reason it is to get the ladder truck into FY22. Um, I, ex I explained uh, in the text why that needed to be moved up five years, which is a pretty significant change. Um, I think we provided you the repair costs. It's really cost both DPW and especially outsource repairs quite a lot of money. Um, the ladder truck is not standing up to 20 years use as it once did. It's going to have to be replaced or plan to be replaced every 15 years. So, for right, so that's going to be the new cycle, Bob? Uh, that is going to be the new cycle. And the um, yeah. fire engines uh, will remain on a 20-year cycle, but they're only used uh, 10 years each as a front line and 10 years as a backup. So when they're a front line, they get a lot more use than when they're a backup. But we don't have two ladder trucks. Um, and this was important for a lot of reasons. I mean, a community needs a ladder truck, but we see that especially the development going on downtown, you know, we really need a ladder truck. Um, so capital was moved up into FY21, and then under FY22, you see several articles moved further out. For instance, the ambulance was moved out one year to get the ladder truck as more important. Um, not really a lot of changes um, in the enterprise fund. There are some FY20 requests, 30,000 in water for uni unidirectional flushing program, which is now required. The um, $500,000 in next year, FY21, is to do downtown project design. So you saw an estimated cost of $4.3 million with lots of streets listed, including one figure to just go onto the railroad tracks. Um, this will design that project. So this, this funding is much more important, if you will, in the death authorization. Jumping down to sewer, um, similar in that there's a $100,000 uh, design cost. And I skipped over, there's a $40,000 uh, cost for both sewer and stormwater to share a portable pump. And that is the only change in stormwater. So that's the change in the capital plan for the next couple of years. There's lots more changes further out, but uh, Bond Council doesn't ask town meeting to approve that. 
Would you like me to go through all the articles? Do you want to stop and, and talk about each one and then assign reports, uh, Eric? Why don't we just do each one as you, as, you, as you talk about it, and we just deal with it wholly as we go through. Okay. So any, any questions for, for Bob from the committee? Okay, hearing none, I'll move on to Article 5, which is on the next page. Uh, this is actually move, moving money around, and this is our best guess uh, a couple weeks ago. I'm quite sure it'll be different on town meeting floor, but we'll do the best we can. Um, we have a, uh, an injured firefighter that's going through a retirement process, so we're asking to put the wages in that, uh, in that line under benefits, which we've done several times in the past, or at least a few times in the past. We can easily pay for that with health insurance premium surplus. Um, the capital I just explained to you, um, I am asking, and this is a change from a couple weeks ago, but I'm asking town meeting to replenish your fund and increase it to 300000 for the rest of the year, whatever that may be, by, uh, by adding 200000 to the remaining 100000 you still have. Um, we're, we're seeing a pretty large increase in legal services, uh, especially in the last few months. Um, lots of open meeting, I'm sorry, lots of public record requests, um, you know, lots of election questions, uh, and lots of uh, development. So for instance, the Daniels House across from the library is actually quite, get used up quite a bit of town council's time things we generally didn't expect or you know, predict. Um, and I'm hoping the 60,000 is enough. It's really hard to know what the rest of the year will look like. I don't think that this year's expense rate will necessarily uh, require a permanent change up that much. I, I did add a couple, I think 20,000 for the next year, but not 60,000. Um, public services, services has some vacancies in staff, and especially in the clerical area and they're uh, able to reduce their budget by 65,000 for the rest of this year. Outsource professional services. Um, we are able to uh, reduce veterans aid by $35,000. There's just not as many veterans or spouses to care for in the community, uh, but they do need to ask for $10,000 uh, for outsource professional services. We had a plumbing, plumbing inspector unexpectedly absent. Normally we would fill that in with a wage we couldn't find a, a plumbing professional to do it as urgently as we needed it, so we had to get outsourced services, which are an expense. Um, public safety, I'm, I'm asking at this point for $100,000 in overtime related to the COVID-19 virus, 50 for fire, 25 for dispatch, 25 for police. Again, that was a couple weeks ago. There's, there's very difficult to know where that's going, but um, 100,000 would certainly be helpful. Um, on balance, uh, three weeks ago, um, it looked like there was a slight surplus projected through the end of the year. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. Um, as I mentioned, because of the fire trucks, especially highway outsource repairs for this year is going to need another $50,000 in Jane's budget under public works expenses. And lastly, under library wages, um, they, they budget their wages pretty tight. Um, they did have uh, two retirements, and we're asking for $10,000 for uh, both retirement sick leave buyback. And just to remind, especially new members, uh, sick leave buyback is something that's phased out many years ago. So when you see a sick leave buyback, um, that's an employee that's been here a long time. You might see sick slash vacation buyback if an employee leaves with three weeks vacation. You know, that's another thing we have to pay them for, and that's not been eliminated. That's just a requirement that uh, we have to do. So right now it looks like a total of 350000 from free cash, which uh, certainly isn't too bad. you notice there's nothing for snow and ice and we're going to hope for the best. Uh, last I looked, there was still a surplus of, I don't know, maybe even $100,000. Yeah. yeah, in that account. Um, oh, so we're not, okay. We're not Originally asking. Originally I thought you were going to have us transfer some. We, we did ask for permission because you didn't know. Um, you know, if we use the 100000 to cover other costs, it's going to snow more tomorrow than I expect. <laughs> so we'll just hope to have a surplus. Um, and then to jump down to enterprise funds, uh, I mentioned, uh, well, I, may, I may not have gone over it carefully, but $82,000 worth, um, 30000 I did mention for capital, and then there's some of those small lines or parts that are needed for the water enterprise fund, a total of 82000 are there any questions on um, 
those. And again, obviously based on what's going on with the virus, we don't know what this might look like in a few months. This is a best sure. guess. So, Andrew, I, I have a question, Bob. Yeah. Um, so as far as, as far as J91 public safety wages, yes. um, the fire department OT, dispatcher OT, and police OT, um, I know it's difficult to project. Uh, first question is, is um, seems to be a large difference between the fire and police. Is that just for EMS relations? And then second question would be, do you, do you think that um, – Seeing how everything's going, do you think that number needs to increase based upon um, the increasing situation in the state and the surrounding areas? Um, I'll answer that by saying going into this, uh, uh, you know, say a month or two ago, uh, the fire overtime budget was in worse shape. Um, they have six injuries, um, long-term injuries ranging from a couple of months to even longer. So they've been short-staffed most of the year. Um, police has not. So that's really the reason for the difference here. Um, to look forward is, is difficult. Um, so far, I'm, I'm not aware of overtime that's been caused, but um, the use for overtime will be twofold. One, it could be um, some of our own employees um, you know, become ill and, and can't work, or just the total demand for services increases. And it's easy to see you know, at least one or both of those things happening. But there's just no way to put a number on that today. Um, you know, I was I was sending someone an email today, and I was looking back. She sent it to me on Friday. It was four days ago, and it feels like five months. <laughs> and this was sort of some for some volunteer coordination in the town. So it's just so hard to look ahead. Um, if all they need is $100,000 by the time we have a town meeting, I'd be very surprised. I, I do think it will be higher, but there's just no number to put on it at this point. Fortunately, the town has tremendous free cash. Uh, not to name a name, but another community near us was bragging to their residents how they had a million two in free cash, so they were in great shape to go through this problem. Uh, we have quite a bit more than that. We should be in good shape as far as that goes. Wow. Okay. Um, think on. Do you guys have any anything to add to what I'm saying at all? Do you guys think that number is sufficient? for the time being, or do you think that should increase, or? Well, you're allowed to do deficit spending, right, Bob? Well, the legislation hasn't technically passed yet. Um, I, would, I would anticipate this will be amended on town meeting floor. I would certainly have no objection if FinCom wanted to make it higher now. Um, you know, add any amount you're comfortable with. It's, it's not going to, none of us are going to figure it out tonight. <laughs> in, in, Bob, this is Mark. There's no, you can always push that money. Well, and, and until town meeting authorizes this, we don't have the money. That's why I asked for the reserve fund transfer. Um, this right. is only going to be approved whenever town meeting happens or whenever we're allowed to have deficit spending, which I'm sure will happen, um, or at least the ability to. So yeah, I, all, all I'm saying is I have no objection to a bigger number. It's not going to matter until town meeting votes. This is Mark. I personally feel like, you know, we can go with your number for now and change it when we, when there's a reality. I, I, I mean, I, like to your point, Bob, there's no, there's no way to tell what we're going to need. Right. Um, so I don't think there's an advantage to putting a larger number in now versus on town meeting floor. I think that's sort of how we've dealt with this stuff in the past and it seems to have worked okay. Okay. And, and, and maybe this is Sean. I'd agree with that approach as well. I don't see there's any benefit to do anything differently now. Okay. If, if you don't mind, under the Finance Committee report, I might suggest a line or two just saying what you folks have just summarized, just so the town meeting doesn't see a number and then be surprised that it's different. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, the next one, Article 6. Any other questions? Yep. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, nope, just was asking if any other questions on yep. Article 5. Go ahead, please. Okay, Article 6, there's no uh, bills to pay, thankfully. Article 7 is moving uh, OPEB funds uh, that were budgeted into the trust. Um, this article suggests moving the exact amounts budgeted, not a surplus. Um, we have had a surplus of health insurance during the year. Um, 
the, one of the reasons I want, we, you saw in the prior article, we moved like 73,000. There still is probably uh, as much as 150 or 200,000. Um, just so you know, um, if for some reason a town meeting cannot be held by June 30th, and if we need to not deficit spend, uh, FinCom has once in the last 10 or 12 years met with the select board in a joint session and transferred money uh, within line items. So you have that authorization if town meeting is not available. Um, it was done in the month of June one year for some board of assessor last minute things. Um, the health insurance, um, you know, potential overage that's still there could be a useful source uh, for things like public safety if we need it, which is why we're not asking to use it up at town meeting. So I just wanted to point that out. And also why we're not suggesting to increase the OPEB contribution. Right, so sort of leaving that, leaving that, not slush, that's the wrong word, but. A little bit of a cushion, or, hopefully. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and if one of our department, I'm sorry, if one of our department lines and we can't have town meeting is short, you know, at least you and the board, select board can jointly meet and, and take care of that. You know, again, if town meeting can't happen, one would hope there's other legislation that's handled that. Thanks, Bob, for that clarification. This is Ed. I was going to ask about uh, that uh, that line item just because we had we'd addressed it in the fall. So. Yeah. Yeah, and and just to follow up on the town meeting thought, um, the moderator was in last night. I've been in touch with him pr pretty much every few days. Um, one of the challenges and one of the difficulty would be to try to imagine doing town meeting remotely. Um, it would be difficult to know how 192 people plus presenters could all communicate, but. You know, we'll see. Uh, I should also That's add that, that part of part of that. That's not unique to Reading, right? Yeah, P part of the legislation proposed was that the select board could reduce the number of a quorum in order for town meeting to meet. So, and I don't think there was any minimum specified. So, you know, there is thought at the legislative end towards flexibility as may be needed. Um, any other questions on the OPEB? Uh, Bob, just in a, uh, well, it may be kind of tangential to the OPEP, but is there any other scenarios that you just uh, referenced as it related to not having town meeting where the where FinCom and the select board may need to to meet? Is there anything else in within these articles that are similar to that? Just uh, um, I figure I just asked since it was relevant here. Yeah, uh, based on current law, the only thing that you could meet jointly and do is to move money around in in an already approved budget. So you would have no authority to approve next year's budget, for instance. Uh, but you could move money gotcha. around the town meeting would otherwise do if you had to this year. Um, again, part of the legislation if town meeting does not meet um, is to authorize towns, as cities are now, to be able to start spending one twelfth budgets uh, each month next year of the prior approvals. I have no idea how well or badly that would work, but you know we'll deal with it when we have to. But I don't see any other reason FinCom would meet other than for a reserve fund transfer by yourself or with the board to, to do some housekeeping on the current year's budget. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, if you're ready for Article 8, there's no changes um, except for some library text. Just to clarify, it seemed to be dropped from the printed version last year. Um, but there's no uh, no change otherwise. All the numbers are the same. All the rest is the same. Okay. Let's see. Article 9 is uh, our annual affordable housing. Again, there's no change to that. The fund balance is a little bit higher than it was because um, one of the uh, developments in town is making small payments. I think it's 35000 a year. Um, so the balance was up a little bit, but it's still below 400000 there's no change in um, any of the approach. It's all the same. Um, Article okay. 10 is where we start doing the debt authorizations. Article 10 is the one I mentioned that's the most important. Uh, it's for the Sturgis Park sewer, sewer pump station. Um, I'm not going to describe the debt authorizations much, but please just stop me and ask. Jane's here and be happy to answer. Uh, Article 11. 
this is the gazebo circle issue, the specific area of town. And there's a little bit of a write-up about the hydraulic model, and especially that we'd be concerned if the Bear Hill tank were offline for a period of time. And that's one that is, again, not urgent and planned to be paid right away, but it's something that's uh, scheduled for FY22 payments, meaning we'll pick it up in about six or eight months. Um, Article 12 is the lead mitigation funds from the MWRA. We still don't have a back, uh, back, uh, background written up. Uh, there's still some details that's not clear. Um, this is, again, to de-lead your system or lead mitigation. Uh, it's available to every community, and it's, I guess, still just a developing program is the fairest way I can explain it. Um, and again, this is not funds that are expected to be paid uh, in the FY21 budget, but uh, as soon as the MWRA clarifies and uh, offers the funds, you know, we'll go out and take it. We won't owe them any money until FY22 if we have the debt authorization approved. <coughs> Um, Article 13 is the larger uh, expense here. That's the downtown water improvements. Um, it's the 4.3 million, consisting of two different sources: some MWRA, some our own. And um, from the thing I sent out uh, either today or tomorrow, uh, rather today or yesterday, uh, you can see an estimate of the 4.3 million and where it'll go. And the very last item. Um, is not actually water main. It's just getting underneath the railroad tracks, which is apparently technically quite a challenging thing to continue work on each side on water mains and somehow not interrupt the train. <laughs> Article 14 yep. is the downtown uh, sewer uh, improvements. There's a little bit of a background on that. Article 15 is uh, similar for stormwater. I think the last uh, financial article is Article 16. It's just the annual Chapter 90 uh, highway money from the state. There's an exact number available now. It's just under 600,000. It's 594, 643. Um, since we had uh, Mayaras join us in this town council, he just has motions except what they give you, just in case it's not an exact match. So that wraps up the, uh, the financial articles. Thank you. Um, just to go over them, um, just so I say it out loud, if for some reason we do need to have a shortened town meeting, um, Alan and I have worked on uh, what makes the most sense. And Article 4, amending the current year's capital plan. Article 5, amending the current year's budget. Article 10, debt authorization for Sturgis. Article 16, uh, authorizing Chapter 90. And Article 17, the, the budget are the most important articles. Um, revolving funds would have been up there, and maybe if the, the current legislation, um, again, would allow the revolving funds approval for FY21 to also stand for FY20, I'm sorry, for 20 to stand for 21. So that's not an essential item if legislation passes. But <clears throat> the next tier, uh, revolving funds, affordable housing trust plan, um, funds into the OPEB. If we don't do it this year, we can always do it next year and debt authorization um, for some other, or specifically for the deletting, and then um, so on and so forth as we get on the list. Um, we don't, it's still way too early to tell, but uh, one thing Alan may do, and he and I at least have discussed, is have Article Two reports be done in writing this year and not be, uh, you know, not be orally at town meeting. Depends on the circumstance. So that would, in, that would involve uh, FinCom for the annual uh, financial update. It might be requested in writing, uh, presumably in advance, a couple of weeks. And that would be if town sure. meeting was delayed and there was some reason why we needed to speed along. Makes sense. Thank you, Bob. Certainly. Um, any, any questions uh, on any of these articles before us uh, from the committee? All right, why don't we take them um, in turn, starting with four, right? That was the first Yes, one. correct. All right. And um, if no questions, we need a motion. 
I'll make a motion to accept Article 4 as written. This is that. I'll second. I'll make a Thank motion to it. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, so further discussion on Article 4. We'll do the roll call vote. Paula? Aye. Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Yes. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Uh, Eric is a yes. Uh, motion carries 7 0. Uh, does someone want to take Article 4 for the report? Sure, I'll take I it. I can take Eric. it. Yeah, Eric, uh, Eric, do you just want to assign the do you just want to assign these as we kind of go along per the vote? Like if you're keeping we track? Could, we could just do it in order here as I've been calling out the yeah. dates for the vote and assign them in that order. Yeah. Unless anyone has an objection or would like to take a certain one, that's fine. Um, no, I mean, if you Andrew want, and I get assigned to you, speak yeah. up. Um, otherwise, we'll assign them. Yep. Yeah, Andrew and I just, because we're at the bottom of the list, we want everyone else to take them first anyway, so. Okay. <laughs> 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 Work for me. <laughs> All right. Um, Article five. A motion to um, approve Article five as written. That's Andrew, right? Yes. Andrew, with the motion. Do I have a second? Sister Dan, I second. Second. second with Dan. Thank you, Dan. Further discussion. For the vote, Paula? Aye. Uh, Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Yes. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Eric is a yes. Motion carries 7 0. We'll give that one to Mark. Article 6, uh, scrolling down. No, no report no, no, on this for 6. Right, skip 6. Uh, Article 7, OPEP. Do have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept Article 7 as written. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Second? Second. Mark. Mark second. Uh, further discussion? Uh, time for the vote. Paula? Aye. Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Yes. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Eric is yes. Motion carries 7-0. We'll assign the report uh, to Dan. Okay, thank you. Article 8, the revolving funds. I'll make a motion to accept uh, Article 8. Oh, go ahead. Okay, that's Paul, fine. I have a motion for Paula. Yep. This okay, is that I'll also. Sorry. I'll make a motion Ed's to second. accept Article Eight as written. Yeah. And Ed will. And Ed will second. Good. And Ed will second. No, 192 people could not do this. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, for the time for the vote, Paula. Aye. Mark. Aye. Dan. Aye. Sean. Yes. Ed. Aye. Andrew. Aye. Eric is a yes. Motion carries 7 0. We'll assign that one to Sean. Sounds good. Unless objections. Uh, article 9, correct? Yeah. Affordable Trust, housing. Uh, housing yep. Affordable housing. Yep. Yep. I'll make, I'll make a motion to, to 
to accept. I beat you, Paula. Uh, I'll make a motion Good. to accept um, <laughs> Article um, Article Nine, Nine. Um, as written. As written. That was Ed with the motion. Do I have a second? Second, Mark. Mark with a second. Thank you. Further discussion. Uh, let's vote. Paula. Aye. Mark. Aye. Dan. Aye. Sean. Aye. Ed. Aye. Andrew. Aye. Mark with a yes. Uh, motion carries 7-0. We'll assign that one to Ed. Moving on to Article 10. The debt authorization for Sturgis Park sewer pump. Motion to accept Article 10 as written. That motion is from Andrew. Thank you. Do I have a second? Paula second. Second it. Yep. Paula who is second. Further discussion? Time for the vote. Uh, Paula. Aye. Mark. Aye. Dan. Aye. Sean. Aye. Ed. Aye. Andrew. Aye. Uh, Eric with a yes, so the motion carries 7-0. We'll assign that one to Andrew. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Article 11. Uh, you ready, Eric? Sorry? Yeah, go motion ahead. To, yeah, motion to accept Article 11 as written. That's Mark. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Mark, sorry. <laughs> no, I know you. <laughs> uh, second? Andrew, second. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, second. Thank you. Further discussion? All right, time for the vote. Paula? Aye. Uh, Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Aye. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Uh, Eric is yes. Motion carries 7-0. I will take that one. Um, article 12. That's lead mitigation. That lead mitigation. Motion. Motion to approve article 12 as written. I don't know who, who, who I stepped on this, Mark. Sorry. A motion from Mark. Second. Aye, this is Ed. I'll second. Second from Ed. Thank you. Further discussion? Let's uh, vote. Uh, Paula? Aye. Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Yes. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Eric, with a yes, motion carries 7-0. We'll assign that one to back to Paula. I'm sure this is riveting TV for the thousands of Reading residents watching because there's no basketball. <laughs> <laughs> what else are they going to do? <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, pardon me, Article 13, um, scrolling. That's oh, the water, uh, okay. larger uh, water. Uh, Haven Street? No, it's the larger one, yep, yes. down by the, tra um, yeah, yep. Downtown. Yep. All right. Hi, this is Ed. I'll uh, make a motion to accept Article 13 as written. Paula, Shot second. second. Uh, motion from Edge, uh, Sean second. Further discussion? Let's <clears throat> vote on Article 13, Paula. Aye. Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Aye. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Eric is yes. Motion carries 7 0. We'll sign that. To Mark. Okay. 
Uh, Article 14. That's the downtown sewer. <clears throat> yep. I'll make a motion for Article 14 as written. Second. Mark. Uh, I heard Mark with a second to Paula's motion. Further discussion? <laughs> um, let's vote. We'll start with Paula. Aye. Uh, Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Aye. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Eric is yes. Motion carries 7 0. We'll sign that to Dan. Okay. 15 is uh, downtown stormwater. Article 15. <laughs> Do you have a motion? Motion to accept Article 15 as written. Andrew. Thank you. And second. Dan seconded. Further discussion on Article 15? I'm for the vote. Paula? Aye. Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Aye. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Uh, Eric is yes. Motion carries 7-0. Article 15 will assign to Sean. This is going to work out well, everybody. Everybody's going to get two. Uh -huh. sure. Article 16. <laughs> I get the uh, This is the. <laughs> yeah. um, Article 16 is the Chapter 90. Uh, highway maintenance, Hi, maintenance. this is Ed. Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to. Uh, um, I'll make a motion to accept Article 16 as written. Paula, second. You, further discussion? Uh, time for the vote, Paula. Aye. Um, lost my mark. Aye. I think I have it memorized. Dan? Aye. Sean? Aye. Ed? Aye. Andrew. Aye. Uh, Eric is yes. Motion carries 7-0. Article 16 would be assigned to Ed. And then Article 17. If you've taken care of that with votes. Do you want to assign it or keep it? Um, looks like I got that one. <laughs> Go ahead, Andrew. Well done, well, well done, Eric. <laughs> no, we, we already voted, right? So yes, I, I, you're all you set. We did. We did. It was just yep. taken. Yep, yep. Thank you. Uh, last thing on your agenda is minutes, if you care to do them. We're here. <laughs> These would be minutes from two weeks ago. Yeah, March 4th. Right, March 4th. Yeah. Um, did anybody, everybody have them and have a chance to look over them and have any questions or comments? No questions for me. This is Ed. Yeah. No questions here. I have this is Sean. So Same I can make Mark. a motion. Do you want me to make yeah. a motion to accept the minutes of March 4th? I have a motion Sean, from second. Paula. Second from Sean. Thank you. Further discussion? One more time. Paula? Aye. I guess we have to do it to adjourn, too. Mark? Aye. Dan? Aye. Sean? Aye. Ed? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Um, I would abstain as I wasn't present, so the motion carries 6-0. Any other business from anybody? 
um, if, if I might, um, for, the, the, for the three people that are watching, um, please pay careful attention. I'm, I'm, I'm one of them. I'm sorry. I remember. Um, please pay careful attention to all the information that's uh, being sent out. The Mass DPH website is, is the single most valuable one. The town is doing what it, what it can to keep up and will provide information almost every day, either the Board of Health, the town. The, si the single most important thing that people can do is to stop gathering in groups. Um, we're hearing too often that uh, you know it's time for play dates, it's time for kids to have a vacation to go out and play in the park. Um, that's really not the best thing. Um, the really the best thing, and it's very difficult, is to try to separate and stay apart. Um, stay in your houses as much as you can, enjoy the nice weather, go out for a walk. Fortunately, it's not the winter we can do that. Um, this has to be a community effort. Um, we really have to do this together, and uh, if we do, we'll get through it together. Our staff is committed to doing everything it can uh, as long, for as long as we can uh, to make sure this is a safe community. You can rest assured of that. So thank you, Eric. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, Bob, um, I just want to thank all you guys as well. Thank you for everything you guys are doing. I know you're, you're still there today, and I, I think the whole community appreciates it. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, hey uh, Eric. This is uh, this is Ed. Um, I just want to echo uh, Bob. Uh, thanks so much for saying those words. Um, I think there's a, a lot of us that share that same concern, um, uh, uh, even though we're going stir crazy, um, uh, <laughs> um, being you know kind of um, with our lives disrupted. Uh, but this is the right you know kind of course of action, and so um, I applaud you. You know, kind of continuing to champion that in any, you know, in any way, shape or form. And, uh, you know, to the extent that, um, that we can do that as well, we will, we will do that as well. We'll take your lead again, just appreciate all your time and effort and everyone's, um, as well. It's, uh, it's, it doesn't go unnoticed. Um, it, pro it probably goes, you know, unsaid, uh, too often, but, um, but we really do appreciate it. I, I do. Thank you. And I do want to add one thing, um, early next week, um, we've had a lot of volunteers to help others in the community that need it, and we greatly appreciate that. Um, we will be out in a coordinated way next week to start matching the needs that are in the community with the resources. And again, we want to do this safely and not in large groups. Um, but there will be a uh, clear call for service for those that are willing. Um, some in our community do need assistance, and um, I'm sure this community will step up. We just want to make sure we organize that thoughtfully, and you'll hear next week. So thanks again. Great. Looking forward to that information. Appreciate those comments from the committee. Um, I fully uh, agree and, and, and support them. Um, anything else before we adjourn? Good job, Eric. Yeah, yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Good job, Eric. Yeah, let's do this again real soon. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere else I'd rather be. Do I have a motion? Yeah, I'll motion. make a motion. Oh. Okay. Go ahead, Paul. Go ahead, Paul. Mark. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Paula, is it time for the vote? Aye. Mark. Aye. Dan. Aye. Sean. Yes. Ed. Yes. Andrew. Aye. Uh, Eric is yes. Motion carries 7-0. Thank you very much, everyone. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.